Well, wearing face masks on public transport is now compulsory here in France and in many other countries. As people slowly return to work, people are donning face masks to protect themselves and others from the spread of the virus. But what is the impact on our social interactions? And why do some people simply refuse to wear a mask altogether? Well, for more, I'm joined by Dr Jonathan Metzl, Professor of Sociology and Psychiatry at Vanderbilt University in Nashville, Tennessee in the United States. Thank you for joining us here on France. 24. It looks as though the face masks uh, will be around for a while. Uh, what will be the impact on our social interactions? Well, it really depends where you ask that question. Uh, as we see in the United States, face masks have become political symbols. I think Predominantly, most people are wearing face masks and they're aware of how beneficial they are. And I'm hearing from a lot of my colleagues and, and uh, co-workers um, who work at, in medicine that on one hand, they feel like they're saving lives. On the other hand, they're feeling like it, it's it's hard. It's hard to go into a patient's room and talk to talk to someone when you they can't see, can't see your face. Um, so in general, Americans are getting around this, but masks have become very political. And as I think people across the world know, um, President Trump and Vice Vice President Pence and other people are refusing to wear masks because they feel like they show weakness. And so it's really creating some, some dangerous political divides in the United States. Sure. And we'll get to Donald Trump in a moment. But just to, to talk about the impact this is having, it, it will surely be um, particularly strange for children going back into the classroom to see their teacher uh, with half of their face covered. No, absolutely. I mean, in, in a way, I think people are trying to learn how to how to emote with their eyes, which is kind of the only part uh, of of the, of the face you can see right now. But but what what I'm hearing and what I'm I'm hearing from colleagues is that people are really trying to figure out new ways. You know, can you communicate with your hands and your eyes if people can't see your face? Because as a species, we're so used to we're so used to looking at people's mouth to see if they're smiling when we talk to them and, and things like that. And so it really is creating, on one hand, a new mode of communication, but of course, it also is a symbol of, of, you know, the virus, which is also fear and, and trepidation. Now, you mentioned Donald Trump and the US president uh, is one of the world's only politicians who ha has never been seen wearing a mask. Uh, this is, of course, despite the fact that the US has the world's highest death toll. Why do you think he simply refuses to wear one? Well, I, I can't say what the true reasons are. I'm sure there's some deep, deeper reason, given the kind of overwhelming evidence about the beneficial effects of wearing masks, particularly in public right now. Um, I would say that for Trump, he has successfully weaponized masks as symbols of defiance and weakness. And, you know, it links into the fact that it, that masks were first worn in Asia. And so it has this kind of anti-Asian tone. It has a, this idea about race and kind of, you know, white men are so powerful that they don't need to wear masks. And so he's creating this as a symbol. But the irony, of course, is that the minute that there were COVID cases at the White House, all of a sudden, everyone there had to wear masks. And so for me, it's, it's a lot of political theater, uh, really, by the president and the vice president. But unfortunately, that message is, is filtering down. And now in, in the United States, it's really a political divide about who's wearing a mask and who isn't. Jonathan Metzl uh, at uh, Vanderbilt University, thank you very much indeed.